Would you have any power in changing anything with the traffic construction during the summer months? Because it seems to me that they always pick I've been a weekend. I mean, it's Route 52. You're operating on the premise that the government makes sense in its decisions, right? But it's, uh, I mean, that's one beef I'd have with the stimulus. I, uh, I travel to see relatives down in the Baltimore area. And a lot of these roads that say America Recovery and Reinvestment Act, I said, wait a second, this road was fine. We were driving, driving down it, and yet the we we're joking about 80. 17, uh, we had a Chamber of Commerce dinner and it said, the future 86, the pretty close 86, the it'll be really soon 86, this has been going on for 10 or 15 years now, and um, I think that's that's quite funny as well. Um, it is interesting now, they're, they're looking at expanding the, the in Orange County, the MTA tax is the big issue, but can they expand uh, rail? And the further they expand it through Orange, then the closer we are to Sullivan, which I think would be I think would be exciting right. as well. You know, again, what are the chances of that? I mean, it would be a very good. A good lot idea. of money. I think I think Orange getting those extra bridges in Orange is going to be first, and then can we keep going to Sullivan? Uh, again, I think um, I think economic development and growth are, are uh, growth uh, is, is a catch twenty two in the Hudson Valley because people are going there because they love it because it's beautiful because it's pristine. But if we could have something well targeted that could help people get from the city. To Sullivan County easier, uh, some type of light rail. Right. Yeah, I think it would be wonderful. Are you for school vouchers? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm a private school teacher, and I also taught in D.C. public schools. We need choice. Uh, obviously, in this community, there's fine private schools that are educating kids with values. Sure, it might be uh, Jewish values, uh, Hebrew language, other things, but it's values. We're developing good citizens from these schools here that are helping society, that are going to be giving back like people here that met today, working at hospitals, working on charity projects. That's that's what we get from our private schools, I think, are, are good, solid values. And what is your position on family values itself? Yeah, family values, I think, is, is critical. People talk about the, the government. Oh, the government's going to do this, the government's going to do that. I come back to, I taught in D.C. public schools. And you had all this money poured into those schools, but ultimately, what was the biggest determining factor? A lot of these students didn't have good families that were that were coming and helping. And I'd even cite uh, Colin Powell. He had a, a student that I taught. He had a jacket signed by Colin Powell, and he said, "Look, we need values. You've got to stay in school. You can't get pregnant or get someone pregnant before marriage. Don't join a gang or get involved with drugs. Get a part-time job and work, work, work." It's those values I think that are going to bring the country back here, and that we need. And we. We see in, in private schools and private Jewish schools and in others, and even some some secular uh, charter schools. But really, for focusing on the values, it's critical. And your position? Uh, how do you feel on Iran right now? The sanctions on Iran. How do you, do you what do you feel the president should be doing right now? The, this needs to be the number issue, we're, number one issue we're working on. I'm not saying Iraq and Afghanistan are causes for concern. We have U.S. soldiers over there, but Iran has the potential to uh, wipe, as they threaten, wipe Israel off the map, the potential to kill millions in the United States. I think this is the number one foreign policy issue right now. We need to do everything we, ha we can to keep Iran from getting nuclear weapons. They're a state sponsor of terrorism. They've murdered civilians in Israel for years through their surrogates of Hamas and Hezbollah. They've murdered U.S. soldiers in Iraq, and I think they are a, a pariah state. They're a terrorist state. We must do everything we can to confront them diplomatically at first, but then uh, with military force if necessary. Iran is the number one concern, but the United Nations, uh, I believe, is a mess. And some of the, the dictators they've been promoting, the Human Rights Council has been a sham for years. Some of the worst human rights abusing nations are on that Human Rights uh, Council. And as I said to the group here before, how many times has Israel been un fairly singled out the Goldstone Report to think that Israel is intentionally killing civilians. It's just absolutely outrageous. My opponent uh, did not sign on a resolution uh, banning, uh, condemning, uh, voted against a resolution condemning the Goldstone Report. He's one of the only members of Congress against sanctions on Iran. It's just unacceptable. I do think it's part of the I hate America, I hate Israel crowd. Everything America does, everything Israel does is bad, and that's not the case. There's no, there's no relativism on on terrorism versus what America and Israel stand for. We have to be united against terrorism. 
other negotiations, other talks, that's fine, but uh, terrorism is something that there can be an absolute zero percent tolerance for. Uh, I think we need to, as I said, reform the UN. When I was a congressional aide, I fought to reform the camps that uh, we're funding for the Palestinians that are glorifying suicide bombers, that have anti-Semitic textbooks in their, uh, their curriculum. Absolutely outrageous. And uh, I think we could be doing a, a lot better if everyone united with just a simple, clear, basic zero tolerance policy on terrorism, which would include Iran, which would include a lot of this uh, uh, pandering to organizations like the UNRWA in the United Nations, and um, just this this apologism, oh, they're not, they're not that bad, this, that, and the other, we have no tolerance for terrorism. My wife's uncle was murdered uh, by the FARC, terrorist guerrillas in Colombia, and um, it's something that we feel very deeply, but just think about what so many Israeli citizens are dealing with on a daily basis. And um, to, to just see that threat and see how far Israel's come, but we can't let up at this point, uh, especially with the Iran threat. Right. What are your views on influx to Sullivan County during the summer months? Yeah, it's wonderful. It's a boom for the economy. Uh, if if the community was not coming there, the econ the, the county would be even w worse shape. And again, uh, politics is important, but I think the cornerstones of our society are faith and family. It's great to hear that the community is expanding, that the, the Orthodox community is expanding, and there's not just the the summer camps, but I learned today just about uh, other camps for special needs kids, for kids that are that are suffering from cancer and other uh, illnesses. So it's a wonderful blessing for Sullivan County and uh, for for the Hudson Valley and my congressional district. So I hope the camps and the activities continue to grow, and I'll certainly be an advocate, however I can, putting the weight of a congressman on local government officials if there are problems, and uh, making sure the community can continue to prosper. Thank you.